I got, it gets my happiest was when I first got to Chicago and, and I found out I could play on this level, you know, and, and I started to feel the enthusiasm coming within the city, you know, and then go out and showcase your talent in front, of, in, in front of starving fans who were looking for some type of change. And that to me was very gratifying, along with the birth of my kids, I can never overlook that. I haven't had any disappointments. I mean, you know, sports is a, is, is, is a tool that teaches, you know, and it teaches you bad things. It can also teach you good things. It's how you perceive those things. I've looked at every experience that I've had, negative and positive, and, and taken that as a positive. You know, if I wouldn't change anything because I think it would alter some of the other things that happened. You know, so when I look back, I can't say that I've had any bad things happen. Sure, I mean, you don't want bad things to happen, but you deal with bad things. You can't have good or you know, without bad. We learn as we move forward, and, and we learn from the past, and we try to project the future. I mean, what it, where are we going to be in 20, 21 years? I don't know, you know, which is the beauty of, you know, creativity. But we're going to keep striving, trying to get things better and better. You know, that comes from learning over the past 20 years and 21 years, and we're going to keep trying to turn that around and, and make it happen for the next 20 years. I think going through the University of North Carolina, I learned the fundamentals of the game, the mind and the, and, the, and the thought process that comes along with the game. And once I got on this level, I put two and two together and I evolved as a complete player. I can't really, I don't want to look so far in the future that, you know, I'm pressed to live, live out a certain schedule. My life has always been, and my motto has always been to live it day by day, you know, and not try to think so far in advance that you kind of forget about the present. You know, I want to live for the present at this particular time. For years, you know, you, you find yourself doing things for for them, you know, trying to appease them. You know, when you're out in the public, and you just, they come up, they, you know, they want to meet, greet, say hello, you know, sign autographs. But I want them to understand this is my time. This is not your time. This is my time now. Do you study pro basketball history? Sure. Uh, I, I think that's the way you learn about dealing with all different types of players, uh, dealing with the game and the expanding of the game. You brought a different. Uh, added to a different expansion to the game, Magic, Larry, myself. You know, as an athlete, are you feeling satisfied? Because I know at times that we've talked, you say you're still searching for that perfect game, still searching for to find in your mind greatness as you describe it. I'm getting better. I'm getting at my peak. I'm getting at my limit. Physically, I think I am at my limit. Mentally, it's, it's, it's a lot of empty space that I don't know much about, but I keep forcing myself to learn more about the game. I am getting to a point where I'm, you know, I'm maxing out my education about the game of basketball. And when you get to that point, it's a necessity to pass it. You know, I was gifted, I was talented. You know, I knew how to play the game. I didn't know how to play the game on the professional level. I had mm -hmm. to learn that. And it took some years of learning, watching Magic Johnson, watching Larry Bird, let to see how they can play, you know, impact games when they're not scoring. Or, you know, they score four points, they still make the, you know, the big plays down the stretch. These are things that you learn in, in, in the process of, of maturing in this league, you know. And as I watched, I began to adapt and I became more complete. You know, I, I didn't, I wasn't one dimensional. The one thing I never wanted to be was one dimensional. You know, everyone saw me as just a scorer, one on one player, but I knew I was better than that. I came from a great program in North Carolina, I teach you how to do more than just one thing. You know, so I spent the rest of my career trying to evolve as a player. And when our team got to a point where we can contend, I had to assume the leadership role. I had to, you know, other guys had to step forward. And then when we got to that point where we were winning, all the bases and all the foundations had been built. You know, now it's just a matter of can you mentally get yourself back each time to challenge yourself more so than the opponent, but yourself to be that hungry each and every time you stepped on the court. That took some evol evolving over the course of my career. And when I got to that point, I had no doubts that I couldn't win any time I stepped on the court. Once you get in the moment, you know when you're there. You just, things start to move slowly. You start to see the court very well. You start reading what the defense is trying to do. And I saw that. I saw that moment. And you know, when I saw the moment, the opportunity to take advantage of it, when Russell reached, and I took advantage of that moment. And 
And I never doubted myself. I never doubted the whole game. We were hanging too close. You know, it was a three-point game, four-point game, five-point game. You know, Scottie Pippen's hurt. Dennis and everybody's in foul trouble. And they never really burst out and left us standing. You know, and you know, we kept hanging in there. And I knew that we were going to have an opportunity to win this game, and I just wanted to be able to do that. And uh, from an offensive standpoint, sure, you look at my rebounds, I'm probably – I only had maybe two or three rebounds. And I told Phil that, you know, I know I'm going to have to play a lot of minutes. I have to conserve energy somewhere. And – Unfortunately, it had to be on the rebounding edge, and, and you know, but the offense, I had to step forward. I think the biggest thing about what I've gone through is that I could have never learned these experiences going through a, a classroom. You know, living through it is a whole different experience than the classroom could ever teach me. A lot of these get guys that I'm playing with now uh, never really experienced when Chicago Stadium was only 6,500 people watching the game. That builds camaraderie between friends and players and coaches and stuff like that that to rebuild or to start over or to have that with someone else you basically have to go through the same processes you know you can't skip steps to to earn that type of respect you got to go through all the disappointments that a relationship must go through and the city of chicago has earned it for years we've been wait till next year wait till next year now we're well we're five out of five out of seven years champions that means a lot. For once, I'm gonna look at the bottom line. Look at the joy of this night and every night that we have won a championship and the enjoyment that you have put together an unbelievable organization that's been champions for five out of seven years. You never succeed without that possibility of failure. I mean, each time that I, you know, I do something, it's, I, can, I can either win or I can lose. And, it's that inner confidence that you got to have to take that chance. This is a guy who came from a little town who have evolved to be uh, an important part to the history of the game of basketball, which is how anybody wants to be remembered. And then when I did choose to come back, I didn't let that be uh, a base or a goal. I wanted to extend further than that. I wanted to, to get back to that, that, that level and, and, and extend it further if I could. You know, that was part of my driving force. Do you want Rodman back? Sure. His dresses doesn't bother me. <laughs> His hair doesn't bother me. Sure, I mean, he's going to go wacko every now and then. <laughs> We've come to live with that. We've come to accept that. But you can't find another player on the basketball court that works just as hard as Dennis Rodman. Gives 110%, dives at loose balls, even if he can't get them. That's Dennis Rodman. So I don't, I don't have a problem with Dennis. You know, and I don't think Phil does. I don't think Dennis does. I mean, I don't think Scotty does. We've been able to control him to some degree. And he, look, we're here for champions back to back. You guys may love him. He may say a lot of crazy things, and David Stern may find him fifty thousand. The guy doesn't care about money. Uh, Dennis Rodman, uh, when he uh, won his Defensive Player of the Year award, unashamedly cried. And here, Michael Jordan wins the Most Valuable Player, and, and sort of breaks up. And why? This particular time. I was being given that MVP by my teammates, by people that I play with and I'm, I'm with eight months out of the year, instead of the media who I see you know, quite a bit. But my players actually gave me that because of the way they played, I feel. Um, <clears throat> and, so, and that was very, that was very touching for me. Uh, and when they said that they were going to go out there and help me receive this, you know, I, I did all I could just to hold back the tears because I, I, it really showed to me what they really felt uh, for me to win that award. And uh, for them to go out there and receive it with me showed to me like it, it, it was a family situation. It was that unity all year long. But I believe, and I've always believed that when the team is successful, everybody shines. All the individual accolades that take care of themselves, everybody's going to blossom from this whole situation. So when I'm with my team and you've seen it, you know, I'm not going to be the one that overshadows everyone. If you, I want your comments as much as his comments. If you're expecting me to carry the whole weight or speak the whole time, I don't want to do that. Because then I'm taking more of a responsibility. When you are just as adult as I am, you have an opinion just as much as I do, we need that to form this team. You know, if I don't win it, you know, I just don't win it. I'm not really trying to set that as a goal for me this season. I, you know, I think more or less the team wants to be successful, and that's what I want for the team. You know, when I was here before I retired, I overshadowed Scotty a lot. 
you know, and he didn't, uh, he didn't get the recognition that he truly, truly deserved. You know what I mean? And he's matured since I've been around. And when I stepped away, he matured even more because he understood what, what I was sheltering him from. You know, the pressure and the press and the expectations that he had to deal with being a star. And when I'm back, he shouldn't get any less of an attention than, than if I was gone. And when I won the MVP, and I will hold true to my word, I will take the trophy. He can have the car. I'm gonna make sure he gets the car. I mean, because he's like a, br a little brother to me, and he's prospered and he's moved along. And you know, from a financial standpoint, from a contract standpoint, he's locked in. He's locked in, and he very deserving of the same thirty million dollars or thirty whatever I get in the next coming year. <laughs> he's very deserving of the same contract. I mean, because he put forth the effort every single night. He goes through the pain, and we work out every day. He's, he's joined me in working out every day to stay healthy and to get out here and provide for this organization and this, this city so that we can be healthy and we can continue to be champions. So, I mean, that's what brothers do. We share our, our success, and that's what I'm doing to him. You know, uh, I just want the trophy. He can, I got enough cars. He can have the Nissan. You learn from the perception of people that you deal with uh, how to judge people. I think how to judge people. Uh, I'm never really going to know because I can't get inside of your head or the next person's head. But I have to be very perceptive of what this person's is, is main objective is in terms of trying to be my friend or trying to get close to me because of other circumstances. I think it must, I must put up a bigger or tougher screen for other people to, to get closer to me.